The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Welcome to the X-Zone, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell, and for the next three hours, I am your host. I am your guide as together we cross the time-space continuum to this place that I call the X-Zone. It's a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. It's a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. And we come to you Monday through Friday from 11 p.m. until 2 a.m. live, and that's Eastern. From our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, on the Exxon Broadcast Network and our growing family of broadcast affiliates right around the world, and the talkstreamlive.com. If you'd like to send me an email, ex, uh, studio at exxonradiotv.com on all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV, and our um, website where you can find out what we've done in the past, what we're doing today, and where we're going tomorrow www.exoneradio.com. I have three lovely ladies on the show tonight. My first guest is Misa. We're going to be talking to Misa this first hour about spiritual healing. Elizabeth Joyce joins us in hour number two. We're going to be talking about talking about psychic vampires, just to just to name a few, and we're going to be also talking about the ascension. And then in hour number three. Gwilda Wiak is going to be joining us. She is the host of The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka. Her website is thescienceofmagic.net. And we're going to be talking about intention. How you, each and every one of you listening around the world tonight, can set your intention and how it can work for you. That's tonight here in the X Zone. As I said, my first guest tonight is a lady we've had the pleasure of having on the show many times, a good friend of the X Zone Nation. Misa is her name, and for over 45 years, Misa has been a spiritual healer, teacher, counselor, channel for spiritual readings, medium, animal communicator, and medical intuitive. She has been uh, trained in crisis intervention and addiction counseling. For the last year and a half, she has been the conduit for a very high-frequency energy that comes through her and will raise the vibratory rate of those in her proximity. She calls this heart charge, healing and works uh, with people in person, in groups, or remotely. Misa has learned to biolocate and is uh, able to do alternative, uh, to do remote healings, I'm sorry, at any location on the planet. That's fascinating. She has studied and previously certified in several alternative modalities, including matrix energetics, educational kinesiology, and others. Misa is an ordained metaphysical priest and also an ordained non-denominational Christian minister. She has been a student of the Ascended Masters for over 45 years. She has recently been shown the existence of the star body within the energetic human force field and is now able to connect people back to this deep aspect of themselves. She also does star body re, uh, retrieval which is proving to be a very powerful experience. Her website is Misa's, MisaHealingAndReadings.com. And Misa, welcome back to the X-Zone. How are you, dear friend? I'm wonderful, Rob, and thank you for having me back. I just love to be on the X-Zone. Well, we love having you here. Um, what is the star body? Uh, this is something new. 
Totally new. You know, Rob, sometimes I just can't keep up with myself <laughs> with the changes that are continually happening. I'm telling you, I had um, over the last several months mm -hmm. in deep meditation experiences, I had seen um, in my body be beyond where the, the chakras are in the body, deep, deep, deep in the body, this four pointed star and it looked like a cross, but it but it was um, it had light coming out of it like a star and I didn't know what it was. But you know, it was just something I was seeing in my meditation. Mm -hmm. And um, then a couple of weeks ago, this is brand new, a couple of weeks ago, spirit was my masters were telling me about the star body. And the way they explained it was that when we first come out of what I call the heart of God into our very first manifestation, our mm -hmm. very first incarnation, we come through a particular star system. Generally not the earth. The earth is very much a crossroads, but a star system. When we come through that, we pick up the energetic pattern of that particular star system. So, it, so it's a part of who we are. But then through our many, 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 many incarnations, uh, most of the time we get disconnected from it. So that's, uh, so when uh, this happened and Spirit said, connect back to that original pattern that is your star body, because I happen to know where my, my stars, my original star system was. When I did that, there was such a huge shift of energy that came to me that I felt totally different internally. And it was amazing. And um, I was telling a friend about it, and uh, it, it, it looked like a cross to me. It, 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 to, to look at this, it's a four-pointed star, but it looks kind of like a cross. And she said the most interesting thing. She said, you know how the Native Americans had all these symbols, and one of the symbols they used was a cross. And this was before the Europeans ever got here. So it was not connected with the Christian religion. And, of course, we know the cross is a very ancient symbol. But she said that in Native American culture, they will say that that cross is actually a star. And I thought, oh, isn't that interesting that they must have somehow had that information about the star mm -hmm. body. And then I started thinking about uh, the cross that Christ was crucifix, the, the crucifix you right. know, that yeah. he was crucified on, the star of Bethlehem. And, and I started thinking about all of these different symbols of the cross and wondering was this really a star? The Native Americans also, in many of the tribes, have the information of what star system they came through. So the, like the Cherokees and the Lakota will talk about, we're from the Pleiades. So evidently they're talking about that was mm. our original star system that we came through. So it, this was so exciting to me. So I have a, a friend that we do a lot of trades. He's a wonderful healer, and so we will work on each other. And I was telling him about this, and he said, well, I'd, I'd like to do that. So I sort of started doing it, not really knowing what I was doing, but, you know, putting the intention out there. And he got it big time. And he said, wow. It took us a while to figure out what star system he was from. Mm -hmm. I wasn't familiar with that particular star system. So it's very, very exciting. And I've done this now with several people and it always seems to bring a huge energetic shift along with it because you're actually reconnecting with this original star pattern of the system that you came down into that carries a certain energy to it, right. a, certain, a certain information. I'm not even sure of what all this means, but it 
changed me and I have been told that I look different. I don't look different to me if I look at myself in the mirror, but I've been told by another person, he said, there's something, you look, you look different. I said, I am different and I feel totally different internally, totally shifted me internally. I can't describe exactly how. I don't have the words for it. Mm -hmm. It's fascinating. Um, it, it, it's totally fascinating. Uh, and, and I've done this now with several people. I did this with one woman that was very big into going to all of these spiritual seminars and workshops and, and learning this and learning that. Yeah. And she got up from the table and she said, I've never experienced anything like that. And that's the most intense experience I've ever had. Unreal. Unreal. It's just blew me away. Well, then the week after, mm -hmm. Spirit started talking about now go back to this very first incarnation and do a soul retrieval. You know, usually when somebody does a soul retrieval, you're doing it for this particular lifetime. And you go back and you you reclaim the energy you've left in different situations that you've been in with different people you've had relationships with and that kind of thing. So Spirit was talking about going back to that very first incarnation and doing a soul retrieval from that first incarnation. So I did that. And another huge, humongous shift took place. And I feel totally different again. <laughs> and so my friend, this this uh, person, this healer, other you know friend that's the healer, I told him about that, and he said, "Oh, I want to do that." So I did that with him. He, st I didn't even get done with it. I just started what I understood to be the process. He started shaking so oh badly, gosh. I wasn't sure he was going to stay on the massage table. And then it calmed down, and then he starts shaking again. And then it calmed down, and I put my hands on him, and I could feel the vibrations going through him. It, it was like the energy was just jumping. And he's been going through this very intense um, energy for several days now. It's just now starting to calm down. And it's just... It's fascinating. It leaves me almost speechless. I've never heard of this before. I don't know of anybody that's doing this. Everybody I've done this with has felt some huge, tremendous shift. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what the shift is going to be, but it seems to be something that's very important. And the star body seems to be in frequency between, it's, it's above the vibration of the soul, but it's not quite the vibration of the God self. It's it's in between those vibratory rates. We're talking at a very high frequency now. And that seems to be where the, the star body is in terms of how it vibrates. The other interesting thing I found was that the the um, form of my far, my four pointed star that I see in me is not necessarily what I see in other people. I worked with one person that they had a five pointed star. I work with another person that had a six pointed star. So I'm not sure if the uh, form of the star has to do with the particular star system or if it's something that's very individual to each in, each individual. There's so much information I don't have yet. Um, but that's been fascinating. And when I look at my star body, it goes right through the middle of my body. But with other people, it can be in other places. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it just blows me away. So like I say, I have a hard time keeping up with myself sometimes because these changes come so so fast to me. And I think, what what can be beyond this? And mm. then a month later, something happens that it's even beyond that. You know, I've known you for a number of years now. Yes. I have never heard you so excited. I'm very excited about this. Now very I, excited. I must tell you something. Okay. I am feeling a very 
positive and powerful energy coming from you. Aha. Uh Aha. -huh. Uh -huh. My energy has changed. It certainly My has. It's a very positive. It's a very strong. It's a very loving energy. Yes. And, yes. I, and I can feel it talking to you. That's fabulous. That's fabulous. I'm, I'm very glad to get that feedback. And it tells me that you're very sensitive to energy also. And um, But it is, it's, it's uh, very powerful. It's very subtle in a lot of ways. Um, the, the heart charge energy that comes through me is getting more and more and more subtle, but more and more and more powerful. And that's, an, that's a very interesting transformation that's happening kind of at the same time. Um, but I'm, I'm so excited about this star body information because it has totally, totally changed me. Where do you think this energy is emanating from? Obviously, Mine's obviously you're a conduit. Obviously yes. you're a conduit. Yes. I, I, I know that you said that it's, it's part of our, uh, the star being, if I can use yes. that. And I, I hope I'm using that in the right context, a star being. So, but is it coming from the Pleiades? Is it coming from uh, another solar system, another galaxy, another dimension, another reality? I would say all of those things. Wow. I will tell you that that my home star system is Sirius, and I've known that for many, 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 many years. And I had a experience uh, a couple of weeks ago where I uh, it, it, this was in my my healing group, my healing meditation group that I do once once a week here in Santa Fe, where I was able to travel back to Sirius first time I had done that and now the whales and dolphins originated from the star system of Sirius and if you go back into the history of Sirius they talk about the amphibian beings that um, that are part of the, mm -hmm. the Sirius system I also heard of course now all this is happening I'm trying to do a lot of research to, to educate myself more fully about some of the history of Sirius. What I came across was the the beings on Sirius were at one time invaded by another alien race and they were pushed into the water and they were very non-physical and very flexible and so they were able to develop bodies that they could live in the water. Those bodies took the form of whales and dolphins and that kind of thing. So I had this experience of the dolphin energy and the whale energy. I, I had been connected with dolphin energy before and going back to Sirius and sort of finding these beings that seemed very, very familiar with to me. Mm -hmm. Now, my take on all of this is this, this change in energy, this energy now coming to me is directly related to that star system and to my reconnecting with that star body, which opened up a greater channel for that energy to come to me and through me. That's my take on it. Wow. It is so new that I, I have to sort of go with whatever I'm being shown and I don't have all the ins yeah. and outs and all the information yet. L let, me, let me just propose this hypothesis to you. Is it okay. possible that... This can I, can I call it star power? Sure. Okay. The star power has actually been around us, around you, for a very long time. But something now has opened up in your DNA that you are able to receive this new uh, transmission. I think you're absolutely right on. And as you're saying that, yeah. What I'm understanding now is that when we connect back to our star body, mm -hmm. that something in the DNA opens up that is connected to that energy of that star system. So let me see. How, let's take this one step further because I, I'm getting all these, all these scenes going through my, my third eye as you're talking. Okay. The, the, star, the star body... All right, that, that 
the DNA that is opening up to this specific frequency or vibrational uh, frequency is identified, could it be identified within our spirit, which is energy, which in fact our spirit would then be able to identify which star or star system we're from because each, I would imagine each star system has beings with their, their own uh, energy levels or energy codes or energy frequencies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very well might be. And as you're talking, mm -hmm. it makes me wonder about the the DNA, the, the part of the DNA that is carrying that code or that information. And would that be different? Um, would, would somebody from Sirius have a different yeah. aspect of DNA than somebody that came through the Pleiades? That's what I was trying to get at, and that's what okay. you nailed. Okay. Yeah. I, I would think that that would be... And I, I'm checking with spirit as we're talking and I'm getting a, a validation of that. Wow. that. That if we could identify in the DNA, it's probably in what they call the junk DNA. The DNA that they don't know what that DNA does. And you know, they just they just call it, oh, it's junk DNA. But what really what it is is they don't know what's in that DNA. Could, could this be the awakening that we've heard so much about that we're seeing evidence of now? Could be, could be a part of it anyway. Um, I, I would think that as we reconnect with that star body, that it's going to open up a tremendous amount of energy, higher frequency, which is going to then come into us in a very physical way, which is going to have some kind of big effect. I know it has on me. I know it has on the people that I've worked with. Mm -hmm. So these are very exciting times. It certainly is. You know, yes, too, it it's, it's is. too bad that people hear so much negativity. But yes. this is wonderful news that needs to be shared. Yes, I, I totally agree. Wow. That's why I was so excited when, when you Skyped me today asking if, if I could do the show. And I thought, oh, oh boy, I'm ready. Synchronicity. <laughs> Coincidence. I, 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 I don't, yeah, you know, like. There's so many wonderful things happening and people are awakening. You know, I've seen it over the past couple of months where uh, the light is going on over their head when it comes to a lot of things. And I, I've always had a very, a very keen interest in whales and dolphins. I've had the opportunity of swimming with dolphins. Yeah. And when, when Laura and I go out diving, scuba diving, Fish are attracted to me. Interesting. You know, it doesn't matter what kind of little fish it is, a grouper, whatever, you know, little little clownfish. They they just gather around me, and this amazes people that we go diving with. How interesting. Yeah. And and I have a lot of respect for for uh, for people who who do their very best to to save the whales, save the dolphins. Uh, there's a Canadian that I admire. His name is Paul Watson. He's the founder of the Good Shepherd um, Research Group. And, um, you know, there's more to this than meets the eye. And when I see people who are cruel to animals, who are cruel to reptiles, who are cruel to other creatures that we share this planet with, I feel, I, I get angry, but I also feel sad for these people because they don't understand that we are all part of whatever this is and we've been put together on this planet for a very specific reason that we haven't gotten yet. Yeah, I agree. You know, the whales and the dolphins mm -hmm. are so important because they actually take on planetary karma and they they serve a very big purpose and when, you know, the whales are hunted and yeah. the dolphins are hunted and killed in tuna nets and all of that, it is not understood the great service that they are giving to this planet. And if we did not have the whales and dolphins, mm -hmm. the karma would be a much heavier burden. And, and we wouldn't have the opportunity to, to be awakened because it would be such a burden. We couldn't, we couldn't find our awakening. So they are so important to this planet and it's it's so awful 
when um, the things that happen to them happen yeah. to them. You and I have to take a break at the bottom of the hour. Misa, please stand by. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing with us this fascinating new you. <laughs> you are I so love welcome. It. Exo Nation, Misa is our very special guest, www.misahealingandreadings.com. That's misahealingandreadings.com. And uh, Misa and I will be back on the other side of this break as we continue here in the Exo from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't you dare go away. Listening to the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Radio's authority on the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology. Celebrating 25 years of broadcasting, broadcasting around the world and to the great beyond. During the infancy of our solar system, when our planets had not yet settled down into their orbits, this was a dangerous place to live. The planets wobbled and jostled around leftover asteroids, comets, and other debris floating in between their orbits, causing frequent collisions throughout our solar system. Hello, I'm Mark Alou. Scientists using NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope have recently been able to examine a young star and its planets that seem to be in the same early evolutionary stage of development. The star, called HR 8799, was in the news back in November of 2008 for being one of the first star systems imaged with a planet in orbit. The WM Keck and the Gemini observatories, both based in Hawaii, snapped the original pictures. We were treated to the images of three large planets orbiting the star, each planet roughly ten times the mass of Jupiter. Because HR 8799 is roughly 125 light years from our own sun, scientists were unsure whether Spitzer would be able to capture a picture of the planets orbiting inside the star system. The team that handled this particular observation was led by Kate Sue of the University of Arizona in Tucson. To their amazement and delight, Spitzer captured wonderfully accurate measurements of the HR 8799 system. From their observations, Sue and her team were able to find existence of a warm inner core and a larger, cooler halo surrounding the entire system, all of which measures 2,000 astronomical units across, almost 18 and a half trillion miles. This larger halo, which is composed of fine dust, is considered rather unusual. Scientists believe that all this dust is being kicked up by the collision of smaller bodies, such as comets and asteroids. Kate, Sue, and her team do not believe that the large planets have yet had the chance to settle down into their own stable orbits. And this is what's causing all of the smaller bodies in the star system to migrate around wildly and collide with each other. Even our own solar system went through a similar phase of bombardment and chaos in its own youth. Scientists believe that while Jupiter and Saturn had not yet settled into their own orbits, they were causing comets and other objects to fly wildly through our system, hitting other small and large bodies. This chaotic environment is what most likely caused the first delivery of water onto our Earth's surface, arriving via wandering comets, which are very similar to large icy snowballs. And the arrival of these comets is also attributed to helping life form on our own planet. Because of their observations, scientists believe that it may take a long time before the dust settles around the planets orbiting the HR 8799 system. With these new insights towards the chaotic beginnings of a planetary system, scientists and astronomers are better able to piece together and understand not only the evolutionary cycle of star systems and their planets, but to also understand the building blocks of life. For the Spitzer Science Center, I'm Mark Kalu. Gibbs A. Williams, Ph.D., is a practicing psychoanalyst, supervisor, researcher, and author in New York City. Much of his life has been dedicated to understanding nature and the uses of meaningful coincidences or synchronicities. His radical and original non-Jungian, non-mystical, non-magical theory of synchronicities illuminates much of the fog surrounding this challenging and perplexing topic. His ideas and manners are fresh, presented in a style that is both entertaining and highly informative. 
He is also an expert on crisis intervention, specially focused on violence reduction for the police and citizens, mastering anxiety, frustration, and stress without the use of medication, and effectively preventing and treating heroin addiction. Dr. Williams can be contacted at his email address at twwilliamsny11 at aol.com or visit his website at www.drgibbswilliams.com. While science pursues fact, magic accesses the quantum level, bridging random facts to form truth. As long as science and magic remain separate and polarized, the truth cannot be known. I'm Wilda Wiecka. Join me on the Science of Magic radio program dedicated to unification and evolution of consciousness. During each episode, I'll be speaking with experienced and respected scientists and mystics. From astrologers to astronomers, from medical doctors to shaman, the scientific method to dowsing and intuition, we will weave together information from seemingly divergent practices to promote unity and enlightenment. Join me, Wilda Wiecka, and the Science of Magic right here on the Exxon Broadcast Network. For more information, visit www.thescienceofmagic.net. Welcome back, everyone. This is the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell. My very special guest this hour is Misa. Her website is MisaHealingAndReadings.com. That's MisaHealingAndReadings.com. Misa, you mentioned star body soul retrieval. What is that, and how do you do it? Well, um... <laughs> It, it is when you go back to your very first incarnation in your in your original star system and you reclaim all of the energy through all of the many, 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 many incarnations, which can be in the, I think they say Buddha at his moment of enlightenment saw his 100,000 incarnations oh all at the same time. Oh my gosh, 100,000. Yeah. No wonder I'm tired. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> so. So you go back and you do a process, um, and and really the first time I did it, I I just sort of, I just asked my God self really, to to help me do that, and I knew enough to send all of that energy as it was coming back to me because I was feeling this big thrust of energy coming to me, right. and I sent it back up into the light for its healing and for its repolarization before it came back into my energetic system. And it happened very quickly. And uh, I don't think it happens that quickly all the time. I had one woman on the table and her whole process, which actually she didn't do a, a retrieval. We were just connecting her with her star body and it took a couple hours. Most of the time it happens quite quickly uh, for me, it happened quite quickly. So I, I just, I really asked that my God self direct this whole process because I didn't know what else to do. Now I have a, a you know, a better idea of, of how to do it, but it happened. And, and, you know, I really think when we work through our God self, our higher self, if it's within our karmic pattern and if it's in alignment with the will of God, it'll happen one way or another. We may not know how it's going to manifest, but it, something is going to happen. And and so evidently the, the timing was the right time for me to do that because it was very quick. And um, it, it just, it's so energizing. I mean, it's just so energizing to have that energy come back to me mm -hmm. and I feel fuller my energetic body feels much bigger I feel more connected um, and again it's very hard to describe the feeling I don't really have the language to describe the feeling but I could definitely tell it was happening when it was happening so how, so how would you how would you go about it for example if I came to see you and I said uh, Misa I, I'd like to have um, 
the star body soul retrieval that we talked about on the show. How, how does that, how, how do you do it? Well, first of all, we would connect you. We would reconnect you with your star body. How do you do You have to connect it to it in order to do the retrieval. Hmm. So we would do that. And it's not, it's not the, the same kind of process for everybody. What I do is I connect with my masters and, right. and with my God self. And I'm told what needs to happen. Sometimes um, there's information that needs to come through for that person to get them ready for that or that they need to have in order to integrate with, with what was going to happen. Um, it's, it's different. It's not like a cookie cutter, one size fits all. Ah, I see. So I said, I, I go into session, I go into, I make my contact with, with my God presence, with, with my masters, mm -hmm. and they will start telling me what needs to happen. And I just do what they say. And it happens eventually, you know, it'll, we'll get to that point where that, that energy will be connected with that person, or that energy will come back to that person. I, I can't, I, my personal mind body identification of who I am cannot do it. I don't have the knowledge or the information or the ability, the power to do that. It's got to come from the God source, the higher source. You, you mentioned the God source and would we define God as the ultimate being, the start, the alpha, the omega? Is God be a word because we just can't fathom any other word that we have at this time to describe his, his or her being? I think so. You know, I have learned that the word God is, has, carries the mm -hmm. highest vibration in the language, in our language. The word God is the highest vibrating word. And I have to tell you, that is there something behind that word? I'm, I'm, I know there is, and I think it's indescribable and very difficult for our mind to even grasp what that might even be. But I have to tell you, since I've been through this process, when I say the word God, it seems like it's, it's that vibration is too low now. It, it, what I'm experiencing is beyond. The vibration of that word and i don't have a word for anything beyond god the word god wow so i have i i don't say that much anymore because what i'm feeling inside is <laughs> vibrating faster so but i think you're absolutely uh right about what you said i th i think it's a word that we use to describe what is undescribable to the to the mind so how does one find out what their star origin is or was some people will have a sense of it um, some people won't and so i will ask and so far i've been given that information and now i find that i keep my computer in my healing room because mm -hmm. It may be a star system I'm not familiar with, and I need to get on my computer so I can see all the star systems in our universe. And, and at least I have that information at my fingertips. So spirit can show me, oh, it's this one, or it's this one, or it's this one. Right. Um, because that's the star systems are not my area of expertise. I know about, you know, Sirius and the Pleiades and Orion and you know, some of the other well-known ones, but I'm finding out that there's lots of ones I've never even heard of. And uh, so, you know, I need to have some kind of reference material. Sure. So far, so good. I've been able, I had one person that their star system did not seem to be in this universe. It was in some other universe. And so we had to work in a very metaphorical way to connect with that energy. We got it done, but it wasn't as direct as like for me, because I, you know, I know about Sirius. Mm -hmm. And um, so that was a very direct information. So I never know, you know, um, about where 
where it's going to take me. I just know that I will be guided and it's, it's going to happen. I, I have total confidence in the masters and in my God self, the, the highest aspect that I know of my self, mm -hmm. that it's, it's, it's going to work somehow, some way it's going to work. So what would you say to someone who is searching, who is looking for themselves, who, who has an empty void and they've been going to all the different religious philosophies, they've been going to the different churches, they've been searching. How do they find what they're looking for, Misa? I think that it is a matter of um, energy, frequency, and vibration. Mm -hmm. And I think that the search is for what do we find that brings us our next step of higher vibration. And it seems to me that it's always a baby step. You know, it's, sometimes we make leaps. As, as I've gotten into higher and higher vibrations, I can make bigger and bigger and bigger leaps. But it took me a lot of baby steps to get mm -hmm. to that point. So I, and I have found different things through my life and I'll find one thing that, okay, I can resonate with that. That feels like that's what's going to help me. And so I will somehow get connected with that energy, however that works. Maybe it's a, do, a new belief system or it's whatever it is. And then eventually I'll like grow it and I'll be looking for the next best thing. And if I just follow that thread, it, it's going to be a continual process and it's going to be like taking the next rung, stepping up on the next rung of the ladder. Unreal. Truly unreal. Is this why there are so many different religions in the world is, be, is because different people come from different star systems and these religions that we think are religiously motivated are actually people from the different star systems joining. Could very well, yeah. yeah, it could very well be. You know, the Dogon tribe in Africa have, they say they're from Sirius and they have, now they're supposed to be a very primitive tribe. You know, you and I would look at how they live and, well, you know, they're very primitive. But they have um, paintings in their caves that are way beyond our scientific knowledge that they say they brought from Sirius. Mm. And they have the, their history, they have information that is just now being discovered by our scientists. Some of it has not even been discovered yet. They have their religion um, that, that incorporates all of this information and all of this knowledge. Yeah. It, it's a fascinating story about this tribe. And they have the um, the keepers of the knowledge, sort of, you know, the priests that understand all of the the writings and the mm -hmm. drawings and, and all of that. And uh, that's a very good example of a people that are connected with their their star system still to this day and the religion that has developed out of the information from that they brought with them from their star system. So when we look at the, the, the religious books, let's, let's take the Bible, because that's, okay. that's, that's a pretty big one. And, yeah. and in my opinion, the Bible has more paranormal stories yeah. than anyone ever gives it credit to. I agree with that. So would we look at the Bible as as humanity evolved they put into their best words what they were experiencing what they found what they believed that it may not have happened exactly as it is written but it did happen and this was the only way they had to explain what they were seeing. For example, the burning bush, you know, receiving the Ten Commandments from the right. cloud on Mount Sinai, the crossing of the Red Sea, and, and the list goes on and on, and even to the birth of Christ. You know? Mm -hmm. So is this a, a, a look at a time capsule through the eyes of the ancients? 
I think that, well, one thing, the Bible has many different levels to it. It's written on many, many, many different levels. Mm -hmm. And there are certain keys that that will open up the meaning of the different levels. It's, it's, it's a very, very interesting book, and there's so much wisdom and knowledge in it. If you don't have the key, if you don't understand the symbology, if you don't understand the metaphor, if you don't have the keys to understand the deeper meaning, mm -hmm then it becomes um, more problematic to try to say that it's literally true. Because I think you're right. I think a lot of it is, um, was there an actual burning bush? The, the, my understanding is, no, there was not an actual burning bush. The burning bush was a metaphor for the God presence. Moses was in contact with his own God presence. Which is, which is a fiery energy. You could call it a fiery energy mm -hmm. um, because it is, it, it's a very high frequency. And fire is always the symbol for spirit. And so he was in direct contact with his God presence. Now, the God presence of Moses, the God presence of me, the God presence of you, the God presence of Jesus, it's individualized God for each one of us, but it is the same God. Ah. So there's no difference. So when I'm connecting with my God presence, I'm connecting with that God energy that is the same for all of us and for all of the great teachers and all of the avatars and, and, and um, Buddha his God presence is the same as my God presence. He was awakened to his God presence. Jesus was fully awakened and was holding that God presence in his physical body, which is why he said, when you, when you look at me, you, you're seeing the Father. And the Father meant his God presence. So he was fully in the physical body in that God presence. So there was literally no difference between Jesus and that level. Now that's a very, very high level of being. That's a that's an avatar. That's a God being that is that is still able to be in the physical body. It's a great gift when when somebody like that is on the planet. So and how Jesus, would, I'm, I'm sorry, how Jesus was he was the the highest being mm -hmm. that was on the planet at the time he was here. Okay, so how do we how do we how do we explain his birth, the Immaculate Conception? Well, my understanding of that mm -hmm. is that the Immaculate Conception was talking about the. Um, the purity of the four lower bodies. So Mary, actually Mother Mary, um, she was from the angelic evolution. And because there was not a woman on the planet that was pure enough to, to have, to gestate Jesus, have Jesus in their womb, he had to have a very pure vehicle to come through. So she leaped into the human kingdom. She had a couple of lives before she was Mother Mary. She had such a pure consciousness. It was an immaculate consciousness. There was no karma. There was no negativity. There was nothing. Uh, she was pure. And because of that purity, she was able to hold that baby Jesus in her womb and give him birth. So was Christ a mortal or was he a demigod or was he a god? Christ is the first emanation out of the Godhead. That's why he's called the Son. I see. So, so he was the first emanation. Now, Jesus was not called Jesus the Christ until he was baptized in the River Jordan, which mm -hmm. was when the personality of Jesus laid aside and allowed the Christ consciousness to come fully in, into him. Okay? Yes. The Christ consciousness is a level of consciousness that many, many beings have reached. It denotes an office 
um, uh, uh, the, the purity, the, the vibration of that Christ consciousness. And the Hindu god, they have a, they have a god named Krishna. Right. Well, Krishna in Hindu means Christ. So he was a being that was recognized at being at that level of Christ consciousness and and again carrying that consciousness fully in his body. So we're all meant to become a Christed being. You know there there when you talk about religion and you put it into the new paradigm it makes a lot more sense. It does. It really does. It does. So why don't you think more people look at what you and I talk about and many people talk about the people on, you know, the science of magic and, and the other shows that we do. Right. Why don't other shows outside of the realm uh, of, of, you know, we can only do so much here on our broadcast network, but other shows, mm -hmm. you know, they, they like to kind of put everything in a cubicle, you know, right. angels extraterrestrials, this, that, and the other thing when what you and I have been discussing for the last hour is everything is basically one. Yes. That's, that's what we awaken to, that there is only one energy. There's many forms. That energy takes many forms. Right. And gets very diversified in its form, but it's all one energy. And when somebody reaches that point of enlightenment, they are fully conscious of that. It, they are the living example of that oneness, and there's no separation. Mm -hmm. We have become, we believe that we have been separated from God. We see God as something outside of ourselves. And so if it's outside of ourself, it can't be us. Because it's outside of ourselves. So it's different than us. When we awaken, when we become enlightened, we are in that awareness that everything is that energy, including us, including you, including yeah. the spider on the wall, including all of these diversified forms is all one energy. And um, somebody had asked the great sage, uh, Ramana Maharshi, mm -hmm. who is one of the greatest sages that India ever produced. How should you treat others? And his response was, what others? There hmm. aren't any others. There aren't any others. There aren't any others. So uh, when it says in the Bible, am I my brother's keeper? You're darn right you are. Because yeah. there's, there's more to that than a lot of people will ever realize. And hopefully, thanks to people like you doing what you do. And you. The teachings, <laughs> the, 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 the healings that you do, the, the hearts and souls that you touch on a daily basis, the eyes will open and the heart will heal. That's what we hope. The, the, the larger awakening on the planet, that's mm -hmm. what we hope will happen. Let our listeners know how they can find out can more about you. Can you imagine if we can make it? In Pardon? I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to get you to. Uh, we're we're coming to the the end of the uh, hour very fast, and I just oh. wanted you to get your website out there and let them know how they can contact you. Mesa Healing and Readings dot com. There'll be contact information if you go to the contact page. I'm on Facebook. I have a YouTube channel called. Mesa, spelled M-E, and then there's a space, S-A-H, mm -hmm. will get you to my YouTube channel. And I have various videos that I've been doing that I've been posting on, on that channel. And um, I have a Facebook page, Mesa. I have a LinkedIn page, Mesa. So you can find me on any of those sites. Right. Mesa, I want to thank you so much for joining us. Always a great pleasure talking to you. Thank you for sharing about the star body with us. I'm truly excited, uh, and please keep me informed on your discoveries on this fascinating new energy that you are just beaming with. I, I definitely will. I absolutely will, and thank you so much for giving me this space to talk about this and inviting me on the show, and you know I love to be on your show. Well, we love and, you too, uh, Mesa. So until the next time we meet, my dear friend, take care of yourself. 
I will. And you do the same. Blessings to you. Blessings. Bye-bye now. Mace uh, has been our guest this hour, Exxon Nation. What a lady. I can feel the energy. I really can. I'll be back on the other side of this break with the news with Elizabeth Joyce as the Exxon continues from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. to the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Radio's authority on the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology. Celebrating 25 years of broadcasting. Broadcasting around the world and to the great Hey, how are you, pretty lady? Oh, did you get my call today? I really want to talk to you. <laughs> no, no, I didn't get your call. I left a number of a message on your answering on your cell phone and i thought that's why you oh. invited me on no tonight. no what's up dear oh i just am very disturbed because everything i predicted is happening rock yeah and, is, isn't that funny because I, I something happened i needed a guest and i got a hold of you and yeah it's very strange it oh, must be the universe at work something is going on all right i'm gonna put you on air hold for a sec i've got to run upstairs and grab a coffee and i'll be right back sure all right thanks for coming on elizabeth Absolutely. when she became the first woman from her country to win an individual